friends, I'm Erin and this is Erin Go Live. This is my September TBR or much more likely my September a pile of possibilities. I'll be participating in both Siri September and Shorty September, kind of disparate things there as series books and series tend to be uh, quite longer. Uh, definitely the ones that I have here are. So I'm going to go through my shorties first and then I'll get into the series that I hope to um, finish or get into. So uh, let's start. Let's start at the top. I'm basically going in like size order from the smallest in, you know, height size to uh, to the largest books. So here we have a uh, middle grade by Elizabeth, Elizabeth George Spear. This is The Sign of the Beaver. And this one, is this Newberry? This is a Newberry Honor book. And this is a story about a boy is like left by his father. He has to like take care of the house or whatever. And then somebody steals his gun or something like that and he's kind of like left to try to survive without having how he's normally used to surviving and a native american boy he comes across a native american boy and he like teaches him how to live off the land how the beaver clan survives and uh and so matt i think matt matt our main character befriends this boy and he learns how to survive so these sound and this sounds like a nice quick fun read 135 or so pages then we have A Little Beast by Julie Demers or, or Demers. I've had this one for several years. I think I initially bought this because Simon Savage really liked it. And um, this is translated by Rhonda Mullins. I'm not sure from what language it is trans. I hate when they can't say, Jeff, I'll just tell you. I don't know from what language it's translated. I'm gonna guess French just because I'm seeing the word Canada a lot and it is uh, dedicated to Pierre Alexandre Frade. So I'm just going to guess French, but it could be something completely different. Basically, there's like a hairy little girl. <laughs> it takes a place in Quebec. There's a hairy little girl and uh, she's known as Little Beast, I suppose. Then we have by Teju Cole, Open City. I bought this last year specifically for Shorty September and never got around to it. But it was one of those, you know, I hadn't heard of it anywhere. I was just browsing the bookstore. Uh, the yellow cover caught my eye. The, the shortness of it caught my eye. And um, I just, it looked interesting to me. So this won the um, the Hemingway, uh, the Penn Hemingway Award. And it's about a, a Nigerian doctor. He, it sounds like it's more a book of like reflections and just kind of like reflecting on his relationships, his past, his future, um, really sounds like it's going to be very lacking in plot, more like we're in this guy's head, it sounds like. So I have no idea how I'll actually do with that, but, you know, it piqued my interest at the time, and I feel like it'll be, you know, quite um, different and um, stand out in its, in its uniqueness. Then we have Who Will Run the Frog Hospital by Lori Moore, and I, this was one I saw on somebody's, I might, it might have been Karen, Karen, the roving reader, and I instantly like flagged it in my brain um, to, you know, keep an eye out for it. Found it, at, I think it was a library book sale, and it's about um, a woman, um, uh, a woman is sitting in a Paris bistro with her husband and realize she realizes she no longer loves him, and it's her kind of dealing with that, and it's a nice short little guy, under 150 pages. By the way, I'm counting, um, under 250 pages, as we get towards the end, we'll have some that are closer to the 250 mark. Most of these are under 200, but I do have some that are right around that 250 mark. And then a book, a classic that I actually have no idea what it's about. I have Albert Camus' The Stranger. It's a book I picked up used. I have no idea what it's about. I just know that it's a, it's a classic, and so maybe I should get to it. Recent pickup of mine, I just got this last week. Um, from my local independent bookstore. I was going out to get some tacos across the street and I was gonna eat there and I didn't have anything to read on me. And so I was like, mm, I better go in and see what I can find. And I specifically told myself only buy it if it's a shorty so I can use it for shorty September. So I picked up T. King Fixture's Thorn Hedge. This is a, um, uh, like a fairy tale kind of story. So there's, I've just read the, maybe the first 10 pages or something. And so there's this great, thorny hedge and there's like fairies or a fairy in 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 the hedge living in the hedge and the fairies i think in the hedge are protecting something and we don't know what that is and the the um the like line here says not all curses should be broken and that's a drop of blood it's a very realistic drop of blood my mom actually like touched this she thought it was like is that real blood it's not we have a book um someone gave me kind of a friendly acquaintance of mine I, we had coffee together uh, she's a Christian, lo uh, local Christian woman. We have some, I can't speak. 
we have some mutual friends. Uh, she invited me to coffee and she gave me her book, Radical and Reckless, When God's Love Disrupts Your Life by Unica Johnson. And um, it includes a companion journal. What she wrote to me, she wrote me a, she, she wrote me a personalized message. She wrote, my beloved Aaron, there's a return of life, a rebirth of growth for you after a harsh winter. A display of abundant strength, a power comes with his, with this rebirth. You are my seed of joy and hope to me. So, uh, oh, love Jesus. I don't know about putting words in Jesus' mouth, but um, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what I think about that. See if it's uh, edifying. Um, anyway, um, I went earlier this year to Salinas, got to see uh, the home of, of John Steinbeck, and I went to the John Steinbeck, the National Steinbeck Museum, and I picked up The Pearl by him. This is a very short book. Um, looks like it's under 100 pages. Yeah, like 86 pages, so that should be a nice classic to add. What else? What did you read? Oh, I read, oh, lo read and loved East of Eden earlier. That's why, that's what brought me to Salinas in the first place, because uh, that's where East of Eden takes place, and I uh, was loving it and just wanted to be surrounded by it, and it's just a few hours away from me. Then we have Sisters by Daisy Johnson. She was the the author of um, Everything Under, which I have but have not read. And I um, found this at my local used bookstore as well. Um, I don't know a lot, I don't really know what it's about, but there's a quote here that says, my sister is a forest on fire. My sister is a sinking ship. My sister is the last house on the street. Um, and it's the two sisters go through something terrible. And I imagine it's them coming back from that, leaning on each other or something like that. Then we have an author that I would love to read more of in this book that I probably have five or six of her books. And I think I've only read one or two. That is Tracy Chevalier and I plan to read Girl with the Pearl Earring. I don't know anything about what this book is, honestly. Uh, is it about the girl in the painting? I, I'm, I'm guessing that's what it's about, but I honestly don't know. That's the thing about short books sometimes too, though. It's like a, kind of fun to just go into it blindly. Next up, and I love this color, particularly I love green. Kevin Wilson's Now Is Not the Time to Panic. He wrote Nothing to See Here um, a couple years ago. That was the book with the kids who spontaneously combust. I loved that book. Um, I don't know what this is about, but I love the green and I love his last book. So let's give it a go. Another book I just picked up recently and um, hadn't heard about anything about it, just read the blurb or read the synopsis and um, it looked good. This is Bad Fruit by Ella King. This is about a young woman, Lily, who's just graduated from high school and she's going to be going to college at Oxford. And uh, it sounds like it's about kind of her parents' relationships and uh, her, her mom becomes unhinged. I think she thinks her dad is maybe having an affair. I'm not sure if the parents are together or not, um, but I don't know. It just seems kind of like haunting and weird. And I just like that cover, like it's so, it's so mundane that it's weird. Just oranges. My book club book this year, or not not this year, this uh, month coming up, like early September, is The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orksy. Um, I probably am not going to read this. Like, look how tiny that font is. On like small margins and tiny font, I just, my eyes doesn't don't want to deal with that. So I probably will end up listening to this on audiobook. Um, if there's anything in particular that I want to go back and like look at in the text, I will do that. But I think this was one of those kind of like print on demand types of books and I'm not a fan. Probably won't buy another one of these. The final shorty is Haven by Emma Donahue. I've loved everything by Emma Donahue, particularly The Pull of the Stars. She has a new book, book coming out um, September or October, Learned by Heart. And interested in that, Melinda at Web of Stories just read it and really liked it. She had an ARC copy of it. This one play takes place in 7th century Ireland. There's a priest and a couple monks. I don't know anything about it, but it's Emma Donahue and uh, it's a shorty. And that concludes the shorty section of the TBR. And I just have three books for series September. Um, I'm not following any of the prompts, by the way, shorty September. The prompts are fantastic. Um, I just don't have the bandwidth to like figure out what goes with what. And I just like, I pulled the shorties that I was interested in. That's how I went with that. Um, same thing with series September. I have um, two to possibly start, one to, um, one to finish a series. So to finish the series, I have V.E. Schwab's A Conjuring of Light. This is number three. I don't know what this series is called. I call it the London series. There's these like, 
parallel universe Londons um, that exist and certain people can go in between the Londons and uh, this is the final book in that series. Um, it is <laughs> the opposite of a shorty. This is uh, 624 pages. Um, really like the first two but it's been years. I think pretty sure I read the second one before Sam died so that's almost three and a half years ago at this point. So it's been a minute. So I'll probably, I have a pretty good recollection of what was going on in that. I have a terrible memory for, for plot and what happens in books. I have a decent memory of at least what was going on in the last two books, but I'll probably need to do like a review before I start that. Then I have the beginning of two series, which by Brandon Sanderson, which I'm like, it's kind of irrationally, I think, it sounds like irrationally intimidated by Brandon Sanderson. I keep, everybody who, who loves Sanderson talks about, he's so easy and just read him and you'll love him and he's not difficult. Um, he's a great place to start. So we got great, great, great place to start for fantasy. So I have Final Empire, the first book in the Mistborn series in the amazing UK editions. I own like five of these books in these editions. So that's that, less intimidating feels like um and I'm just kind of like what I'm feeling more in the mood for is to start Skyward and so I know the fourth book of this series is coming out soon um and this is YA and a YA sci-fi and it's something like this girl goes to this academy or whatever and her dad was like a traitor or something like that and so she has to kind of fight against the um the black eye I guess as her family has um and prove herself as her, in her own right and you know despite the way everybody feels about her family so these are the 473 books that I plan to at least choose from for the month of September but I would love to know what type of read-alongs are you or read-a-thons are you planning to participate in in September are you in shorty September are you doing series September is there something else there's like shake shake timber is that a thing like Shakespeare I know, I know some people are doing that. The, that one's not for me personally. Talk about intimidating. No, thank you. Anyway, thank you for watching. Remember, every day is a great day for a great day. All day. Mm -hmm.